Hi everyone. We have understood the macroeconomic objectives of government, but now to actually understand how they can be targeted, we need to find out how they're measured. So, let's take growth, perhaps the most fundamental macro objective of all governments, and let's understand how we can gain a measure of growth. Before we look at that though, we need to understand what the economy is. How can we decide whether an economy is growing if we don't actually know what the economy is in the first place? So the circular flow of income helps us get an understanding of the economy, it models the economy for us, and from this model we can gain three different types of measurement of growth. So let's start off um, by looking at households and firms, two economic agents that exist in the economy. Households provide their services to firms in the form of labour, in, in the form of uh, entrepreneurship, and as a result they gain rewards, they gain incomes out of it. The incomes then go to households, households receive this, and they spend that income on goods and services produced by firms. Right. Well, that's one measure of the circular flow, money flowing around the economy. It originates from firms when actually uh, workers are hired and those workers spend that money. Okay, really, really simple, two sector, two agents. In truth, the economy is much more complex than that. We've got the government we need to include, the government spends money as well, the government taxes people. We also need to consider the rest of the world. We trade, don't we? Money enters our country by exports, and also money leaves the country by imports. There are lots of different ways in which money can enter that we've not looked at here, and there are lots of different ways that money can leave the economy that we've not looked at. So we need to open up this model now and consider four sectors, bring in the government, bring in the global economy. So, yes, there is consumer expenditure. Yes, okay, households, consumers, basic people, you and I, we receive incomes, we spend that income, but there are other types of spending as well in the economy. Governments spend money. Okay, there is government spending. Known as G. These letters are very important, so learn the letters as well. There's spending by firms in the economy, which is known as investment. Capital I. And there is also spending by foreigners when they purchase our goods and services. Known as exports. So when we sell our goods abroad, money comes in, and that's export revenue. So yes, you've got all these three different types of expenditure as well, and all these three things will lead to more money coming into the economy, money entering the circular flow. They are called injections. So on top of consumer spending or other types of spending, where money is injected into the circular flow, so make sure you know those. But at the same time, we've assumed in this basic model that all of our income is spent. Well, definitely not. Some of it actually leaves the circular flow. Some of it we don't spend. Some of it we save, don't we? So savings, known as S. Some of it is taxed. There is the government, and the government taxes a lot. Taxation, T, some of it leaves by taxation, and some of it is spent on goods abroad. And that's known as spending on imports, when we buy goods from abroad. And all of these three things, either money is leaving the country, leaving the circular flow, or it's just not being spent, in which case it exits the circular flow. So these things are all known as leakages from the circular flow. Where money can leave the economy, leave um, this flow of income and spending. So, you need to know, we've got injections, these are very important to understand, the leakages here, which are also on top of expenditure, consumer expenditure in the economy. So, consumer expenditure is not an injection, it's an actual part of the flow, whereas these three things are external, which is why they're injections. What you need to know here is, well, how can we kind of get an idea of growth? Well, if injections, so G plus I plus X, is more, or more than leakages, S plus T plus M, there will be economic growth in the economy. Whereas if leakages were more than ejections, there will be a fall in growth in the economy. Right? That's known as short-term growth. The actual size of this flow can also increase if there are more households. If um, the quality of the labour increase, so basically if the quantity and quality of our factors of production increase, then the size of this flow can increase as well. And that will be long-term growth, which we're going to get into later on. 
But very basically, this is the circular flow. Injections and leakages, for injections and more than leakages, we see growth. Make sure you learn this very well. See you next time. Thank you.